have with us eminent jurist and one of India's finest minds, Mr. Fali Nariman, joining us on a day that he's being honored as one of India's 25 greatest living global legends. Mr. Nariman, it's a great pleasure to talk to you. It always Thank is. You. In your book, State of the Nation, you have written that in every election after 1951, there are increasingly less proficient and less scrupulous men and women that are being thrown up. Is the spectacular success of ARP in Delhi a change from that trend, according to you? Yes, hopefully it is. And I say hopefully because I'm a little hesitant as to how everything is good until it works out, and if it works out. And I hope it works out. And I'm sure it will, because the will is there. The, the new party came in because of the mass, massive corruption, everybody dipping into the till, as it were, and then not being wanted to be found out. So I think it's a good trend. How far it progresses will depend upon some new thing that is required, which is wisdom amongst those who have succeeded. There has to be much more wisdom. Mr. Nariman, this has also been an extraordinary week uh, after the, uh, the Supreme Court verdict on, on Section 377 that came in, which, which shocked many people. And you had a key role in that case as, as the lawyer for the parents of, of the uh, uh, LGBT community. How, how do you react to this verdict, sir? Did it shock you completely? <laughs> no, I, I'm used to these shocks, quite frankly, because <laughs> so I shocked. lose more cases than I win <laughs> at this stage. But I'm not shocked. But what, what I am uh, upset is that uh, I don't think it has projected the view of the Supreme Court of India. It has projected the view of two judges of the Supreme Court of India. But unfortunately, under our legal system, there's no such thing as the view of two judges of the Supreme Court, because you can't go to anybody else. Whatever two judges of the Supreme Court in a judgment say is the judgment of the Supreme Court, and that can't be turned, turned over by a larger bench, as it were, directly. So I, I am a little worried that, and this, this has, to my mind, gone against the great personal liberty that we profess. Because Article 21 stares us in the face. The Supreme Court has gone out of its way to, to include all manner of things in the clause first in the, the, that expression, personal liberty, that no one shall be deprived of his personal liberty. And I think the basic point of being deprived of your personal liberty is to do in private whatever you choose to do, so long as it is not an offense under any other provision of the, of the penal code. But uh, there are some who have said that the Supreme Court is technically right in that it has thrown this issue back to Parliament because it is Parliament that should be framing parliament laws. Parliament will never frame any law. That's and the problem. That as is it the is first composed. Problem. And the same court has never hesitated to encroach on Parliament's turf in the past. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what do you think held them back I, from doing it now? I don't know. Sheer, sheer old age. I suppose <laughs> I'm also old. But I mean, an old age thinking, an old age thinking. Yes, it's a sort of a moralistic ground. It's not a legal ground, it's a moralistic ground that this ought not to be done. In fact, if you read, you see, the, the penal code when it was drafted in 1860, Macaulay left a note on each of the clauses. And as to 377, he only introduced a sentence saying that this is so obnoxious that the less said about it, the better. I mean, that, because that was the Victorian way of thinking at that point of time. So, but that we can't transport those thoughts into the section. We have to read down, read out. Nowadays, there is a new technique of reading out, not only reading down from a, from a textual provision of a statute, but reading out as well. So it's quite possible to say, Yes, with animals and things, because you see, it's roped in with animals, 377, any animal also, any, any, any sexual orient uh, intercourse with any animal is, of course, a violation of 377. Nobody says it's not, but the, that may be obnoxious to moral. But what two consenting adults do in the privacy of their home is no business of the state, and that's the essence of personal liberty. It uh, doesn't matter which court also has said it. Hundreds of courts all over the world have said it, but it doesn't require courts to say it. That's, that's a normal circumstance. You, you sounded 
rather pessimistic about Parliament uh, taking a position on this. I, uh, you know, we, we have those scenes, surprisingly, Sonia Gandhi and Rahul Gandhi speaking out and individual politicians of other parties, including uh, a senior politician of the BJP, yeah. although he sort of stood out on his own. Do you think that with the, some of these voices coming out, there's some hope? Or, or it's just, it's no, just Parliament is full of too many people with, just, with that yeah, old yeah, thought? They are just sparks coming out. Because I don't think the entire Congress party will even support uh, what uh, Sonia Gandhi is saying. Of course, they, they'll publicly vote they have publicly. To. Yeah, publicly they'll have to vote, but they won't uh, support. So I don't, and particularly the other parties, either political parties, won't. So I'm afraid uh, it will take a little time. But but I hope I hope the Home Ministry issues some sort of uh, 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 missive to the police so that they don't rush into private homes people. and break them open. You know, that's how it used to happen. It's never, it's not happened here. But the very fact that it has been upheld now will induce somebody to say, I believe that A and B who are not married are living together mm -hmm. or A and B are not man and woman who are living together at a particular place. And, as, and please do something about it because I get shocked when I think like about that. it like that. So uh, if somebody does go, you, you'll find uh, that there'll be difficulty. Mr. Nariban, this is also a very uh, interesting time for the judiciary uh, in this country. And we've had this case of, of a former Supreme Court just, uh, Judge Justice Ganguly, who has been accused by uh, an intern who once worked with him of, of sexual assault. Uh, a Supreme Court appointed panel has said prima facie there is evidence that he did so. And yet he has not stepped down from an important position that he holds as, as uh, head of the West Bengal Human Rights Commission. Do you believe he has a moral responsibility that uh, to stand down, to step down? Well, what the post he holds, I think he, I mean, he's, you see, I don't know the, the correct version. I don't know what he told the judges of the Supreme Court or what his version is. But if his version is that I did not do anything that she said that I did do, then there are only two of them who, because this was not videotaped, I mean, the, what, the, yeah. the, what happened in the hotel room. But it was a little odd that a particular individual who was red uh, retired, etc., invited this lady for dinner. I mean, if he, if he invited all his juniors for dinner or some such thing, it would have been perfectly all right. And that it perhaps started all this. Then the lady, of course, apparently uh, seems to have said, and that's what the newspapers report, <coughs> that he plied her with wine and things of that sort. So I'm not very sure whether that was something which uh, one would expect uh, a judge of the Supreme Court or a retired judge of the Supreme Court to do. Now, he says, I did no such thing, except that he admits the wine and the drink and things of that sort. That's apparently what the papers record. And if he has a case where he's right, then I'm afraid he's entitled to stick to his position. Uh, but the panel says, prima facie, they believe uh, he, he, he did. Yes, but he that, did is, that is not legally binding on anybody. That was only meant for an administrative setup because the Attorney General came and said that this matter has di diminished the prestige of a particular judge. He has been wrongly maligned. So all that it means is that he was not wrongly maligned. That's all it means, that the charge that the lady has made does mean but, that it's but not But they say he, he did malign. indulge in unwarranted behavior of a <coughs> sexual nature. That's what they have said. Yes. That's what but the he, panel has said. Yes, that's right. But he's, he's now relying on law, namely that this is not going to be evidence in any proceeding. But is it a question of law or is it a question of moral responsibility? It is a question of moral responsibility. I mean, if you ask me if what I would do, <laughs> if ever I did it, I would resign. I agree. And so you believe he should. Uh, morally, he should resign, yeah. but legally, he has yeah, to choose legally, whatever. he may have a cast iron case. He should say that I have nothing whatever to do with it, and therefore I resign. There are many who take the opposite view, I must tell you, hmm. including Somnath Chatterjee, yes, I who know. defended him, and that's why now he's taken this view. Of course, he's an old friend of ours, so we don't know exactly what happened, nor do I ask him, nor do I bother to ask him. But, but you know, the, sir, this, this whole case and the Tehelka case... It must case be a very harrowing time, you see, for the families on both sides. I, I'm very sure harrowing. Is. But you know, it's also exposed uh, a, a lack of a mechanism within the higher judiciary no, to deal with these, with these no, issues. No, but how do you deal with it, you see? I asked yeah. you, sir, the Supreme yeah. Court, for yeah. instance, yeah. laid down the Vishakha guidelines in 1997. Yeah. And till recently didn't even have a committee no, to look that, that, at sexual that, harassment no, cases. Are you are right. Yeah, but, but I was chairman of that committee, yeah, that Vishakha committee, yes, which exactly. laid down the guidelines. Yes. Correct, but now what, what are we to do? You see, ours is a male-oriented society. Please remember, 
we, 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 we may profess a lot of things in public, but what we believe privately are two different things. But is, is the judiciary guilty of double standards then on this issue? Possibly, possibly, maybe. But at least they have done the right thing in my opinion. And what else could they do? You see, they, suppose, suppose they had said that it's none of our business because that's a criticism against the judiciary. That you should have said, as you say afterwards, that it's none of our business, we won't do it. Now the Chief Justice constitutes a committee and says kindly investigate and tell me what the position is. So the three of them get together, interview both parties and come to a certain conclusion. Now, that conclusion, either you believe the judges sure, of the Supreme but, Court but or you don't. does there need to be a mechanism to deal with this now at an institutional <laughs> level? Uh, there is, is there is. That's the committee. But, 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 it, uh, but he was, they were given the benefit. Judges, no, but, uh, but both of them were given the benefit of uh, a, a, a superior body, if you don't mind my saying so. There's no judge in this committee except the sitting judge. The yes, chairman is yes. a judge. That's all. There's no other judge. So... I think it was weighted, if at all, against the lady. This which committee which was, was one of the criticisms of which this was committee. the criticism when it was first appointed. In fact, that was the main criticism. Why? Why didn't they go? So they said, "No, we have to protect our retired judge as well as this." Now, what do we do? This is a situation not contemplated in the guidelines. Retired judge, judge, etc., not contemplated. So we'll do something different. So three senior most judges, or three judges, two of the senior most plus one lady judge. But can judges judge their own? Well, you, you are forced to. Otherwise, they could have said, please go and file whatever you please to file. We will not do anything at all. In which event, just imagine the reaction. The reaction would have been, you have not done your duty. You are asked to do something and why haven't you done it? You are protecting your own kin. You see, there are two sides to it. Well, Mr. Nariman, it's always a pleasure to talk no, to you. No, thank, thank you so much for joining us Thank today. you. Thank you.